I think my favorite part about content creation is getting new gear, whether it's a new lens for my camera to get a nice blurred background or to get a better mic to make myself sound better. I love buying new equipment, but I also understand that not everybody can afford a DSLR with a lens and a cam link to get this kind of effect. So today I want to show you how you can use your webcam to look as close to this as possible. And for the demonstration, we're going to be using the Logitech C920, which is pretty much the most tried and true webcam that pretty much all content creators have started with at some point. But first, a quick message from today's sponsor. VIP SCD Keys is an online digital retailer who offers digital product keys at affordable prices. They offer keys for Windows products as well as Steam keys, Origin keys, Uplay keys, PC games keys, and even Xbox and PSN card keys. Now we all know that when you're building a PC, the one thing we never want to pay for is the Windows activation key, right? A Windows 10 Pro key from Microsoft costs 200 US dollars, but from SCD Keys, it only costs $20. All you have to do is type in hashtag VIP SK in the search bar and it'll bring you right to your own copy of Windows 10 Pro. And the best part is if you use code PP20 at checkout, you'll get an additional 20% off your purchase, making it just $16. Now, not only do they have Windows 10 Pro keys, but they also have Microsoft Office Pro keys that you can use my code on to bring your purchase down from $58 to $47. And the best part is both products can be bought safely and securely through multiple different payment methods. Once you've completed your purchase, just let it redirect you to the order status page. Click the view keys and codes button, then click the get the key button. Next, open your Windows start bar and type in about and press enter. At the bottom, click on change product key, then click on change product key again. A little box will pop up. Go ahead and paste your key in there and then wait for Windows to activate. So be sure to check out the link in the description down below to get your keys today. So let me start off by saying you're never going to be able to get a webcam to look as organic or as natural as an actual DSLR with a very small aperture lens like I have on my Canon 80D here to get the blurred background. However, there are some tricks that I know that I've learned throughout the years of using a C920 long enough to make it look very close that pretty much nobody's gonna notice when you're streaming. So without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, it's 90 degrees in here and I had to turn my air conditioner off so there would be no background noise. So we're doing this quick. So right now you're seeing me on the Canon 80D with a 24 millimeter lens at a 2.8 f-stop. As you can see, I'm in focus and as you look around the room, the Donkey Kong barrel that I just so conveniently got yesterday, out of focus. The TV in the background, which I throw my other streaming friends on when I'm live. This is my streaming setup. That's the air conditioner. You can see my Creeper poster that I haven't hung up yet. Everything's out of focus. I am the main focus right now, right? That's what we want. You're not ready for what a default C920 looks like compared to this. Okay, so the first thing, obviously, I'm, I'm literally glowing. I'm glowing. <laughs> I'm not this white. I'm just glowing and it's blue. The first thing that we're going to have to do is download a driver from Logitech. Now they do not offer this anymore. This is the Logitech webcam software. It's an older version of it. So what I've done is I've hosted it in my Discord. All you gotta do is go into the Discord and click on the free stuff one right here. I've got all of my overlays and everything from older videos in here. Literally download the Logitech driver software right here. LWS280.exe. Install it. Make sure you restart your computer. I was looking at the DSLR. Restart your computer, please. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to give full control of the way the webcam looks. Once you've done that, go into properties of the C920 and then click on configure video. This is what it should look like. This is the software that I left in Discord for you. First things, turn off autofocus. Ain't nobody want that. You are probably not going to be close enough to the webcam to justify changing the focus. More likely than not, you were already in the correct depth of field for it. These don't have a very small aperture, so you're not really gonna be able to get a natural blurred background. You can mess around with the punch in, punch out, and then reface it if you want. I personally like the wide FOV of the C920 and don't mind showing off more of my room. So go into advanced settings and turn all three checkboxes off immediately. This is gonna give you full manual control of the webcam. So the first thing that we're gonna touch is the exposure. This is the webcam's sensor sensitivity to light. Now, let me also start by saying before I move the exposure, these webcams need a lot of light. In the intro and in every video, you see that I have the two key lights sitting right in front of me here. Do you need key lights? No. Do they help? Absolutely. Can I justify telling you to spend $400 on two key lights? Probably not. But I like everything to look super consistent and crispy. 
and having two key lights that integrate with each other is primo. We're gonna turn the exposure down, right, right, right away, right away. Turn it down so I don't look like I'm glowing, right? You can still see the reflection off my forehead though. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mess with the gain. This basically focuses on the highlights, like just the spots that are still like really glowy. And of course, as you get closer to the camera, you're gonna get more glowy just because of the sensitivity, the reflection to the light and everything like that. So we can really just kind of dial it in. You can see my face doesn't look nearly as reflecty now. And the next thing we're gonna go right to is the white balance just to get this out of the way. And we're gonna just pull it until it looks really natural. So my shirt looks about right here. That's pretty close, but I still look pretty washed out. Like the colors just look bland, almost like I have a Sienna filter over it. So we're gonna mess with the color intensity. This is just saturation. Warm white balance is literally just the warmth going to blue to red. That's balancing the blue to red tones. So we're gonna turn the color intensity up and just kind of bring the colors out. That makes the room look significantly more natural, right? All of a sudden now my eyes look normal. My, my shirt actually looks purple like it's supposed to. The Donkey Kong barrel, you can actually see the red, the yellow, and the brown of the barrel. Brightness, if you want, you can mess around with this a little bit. Just be careful because it'll start making it look washed out if you go too far. So this is one that you really want to just kind of softly play around with to really just kind of like make sure that the room doesn't get too bright. And contrast is the extremes of blacks and whites and how intense they are. So if you bring this all the way up, you can see that all the blacks are super dark and all the whites are super bright. You really don't wanna to touch too much of this because otherwise you'll really start to mess with the colors. Contrast is a nice way to make things pop, but only in small doses, especially with a sensor that's about this big. So now if you want, you could mess more with the gain to really just kind of like make sure like now there's no glowing on my head at all. You can see a bit of a reflection. That's because it's hot in here. And then if you want, you can mess a little bit more with the color intensity to about right, right. I'd say right about there is about natural. So remember exposure is sensitivity to light, how much light the sensor is letting in. Gain focuses on the highlights. It's not the same as exposure but it does specifically more focus on the highlights of this. Brightness, that's self-explanatory. Contrast, black and white's intensity. Color intensity is saturation, and white balance is the warmth or the coolness of the camera. And these are the main things to get your colors dialed in. Now, some people might say this looks a little underexposed. Personally, I like it to look more flat and more natural. I think this looks more like a normal room tone to me. And if you've seen any of my older streams, you know that I used to do like super bright RGB lights behind me and everything. And now I actually go for like a more natural, welcoming, warm tone. So we're gonna click save. Now that part of it is done. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add two filters into the properties. So we're gonna go back to the C920 and click on filters. And we're gonna add a sharpen filter first. And what this is going to do is it's just kind of crisp it up just a little bit. However, because this is a little bit darker, you just want to make sure you don't over sharpen it because you will start to see some noise around my face right here. So just make sure that when you bring it down to zero and then just kind of bring it up just a little bit, it's just going to make like my hair pop out a little more and make it look like there's a little bit more focus on it. This is just sweetening the image essentially. And I even do this on my DSLR. Next, we're going to do a color correction filter. Now, the reason that I did a color correction filter on this is because even though it has the same properties as the Logitech software, it actually allows you to more finely tune it than the Logitech software within OBS because of how small the decimal increments are. So basically all this is going to do is it's just going to like bring down that little bit of whitewash that it looks like. So you see how before there's like this white haze over it a little bit. And just by messing with adding a little bit of fine tuned contrast and a little bit more saturation, now it looks like we are sitting in the actual room. It feels almost like you're looking through the screen rather than having this film over top of it. And compared to the DSLR, there we go. And that's a balanced DSLR. Now you can see my hands out of focus there because we have the natural blur depth of field, but that's pretty dang close to what my DSLR actually looks like. And if you saw this at first, you wouldn't think, wow, that looks bad. Now, again, I said at the beginning of the video, you're never gonna make a webcam look as good as a DSLR, but no one would be mad with this quality of color balance. Now, the last trick that I wanna show you to get the blurred depth of field like this is to actually use something called NVIDIA Broadcast. Now, if you don't have an RTX capable graphics card from NVIDIA, like a 20 series or a 30 series, then this isn't gonna work for you, unfortunately. But for the people who do have an RTX capable card, which I think it even goes down to the 1660 series, this will work for you. However, let me start off by saying I don't recommend using this on a single PC streaming setup. 
only use it on a dual PC streaming setup because of how resource intensive this is. It will chug your computer if you are streaming and using this and gaming all on a single PC streaming setup. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is actually deactivate the C920 in OBS because the NVIDIA broadcast won't actually be able to use it because the webcam will already be active in OBS. NVIDIA broadcast can't use the same source. So just go into the C920, click on properties, and click deactivate. Then open up NVIDIA broadcast. And now that it's opened up, go over to the camera section and then make sure that the C920 is selected and boom. Now you can see that there is a blurred background and you can actually control the strength of the blur. You can turn it down so it's a nice soft blurred background or you can turn it all the way up if you really wanna sell it. But personally, I like to find like a nice balance between where it looks like I'm the main focus and for how far away the wall is, and for what my DSLR looks like, I'm gonna set a softer blurred background. You can set it to whatever you want. This is just a personal preference. Now, the difference between performance and quality is basically the edge detection. So if it's on performance, basically when you're moving your hands quickly, it won't be able to detect the edges as easily on performance, but on quality, you can see that it really doesn't know where the edges are. So what we're going to do is you have to leave this software open, right? So now you're thinking, oh, I gotta add a whole new source to OBS and reconfigure everything. You don't. Go into properties and all you have to do is change it over to the camera NVIDIA broadcast source right here and then hit activate. And then I will pop back in and boom. Now you can see that I have the blurred background. Um, the edge detection is a little weird on the SM7B right here on my blue compass arm, but this is what you get for an algorithmically induced bokeh effect as opposed to a natural, more organic top-down lens effect with a 2.8 f-stop. But there you go, guys. That is how you make your webcam look as close as possible to a DSLR without breaking the bank, assuming you already have an RTX-capable graphics card. If you have any questions, feel free to jump over into my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash pixelperfect. Or again, if you're already in the Discord because you downloaded the software, feel free to ask any questions to set everything up, and I would be more than glad to help you. I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below. And until then, peace. Save it. For a f***ing rainy day. Dude, I scared the hell out of me. <gasps>